Our series, Pay Attention, looks at how to retrain our focus and recapture our attention under the bombardment of technology and information that distracts us. The average person scrolls through 300 feet of mobile content a day. That's about the equivalent of a football field. We wanted to explore some of the ways people are trying to short circuit the noise from the mundane to the extreme. That's how I ended up floating in a sensory deprivation tank in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Floating in less than a foot of water, buoyed by 2,000 pounds of salt, I'm weightless. I'm unsure where my limbs end and the water starts. And at some point, I lose myself, never falling asleep, but moving into a state of a clear but empty mind. Sensory deprivation. It's about as far as I can get from the chirpy world of breaking news, social media, email, and the rest of what pinballs through our heads. In All the distractions that are in this world are not in the tank. For the past six months, entrepreneur Scott McKenzie has floated three to six times a week in Southern California. To have that nothingness and be forced to just decompress, there's something revitalizing about it. McKenzie says that nothingness has opened up his mind to new business ideas. What it does is it keeps me more focused. You realize, wow, like my mind had like a whole reboot. Around since the 50s, floating is now resurfacing as an alternative therapy for physical and mental health. <sighs> Elite athletes like Golden State Warrior Stephen Curry, Curry three. claim it helps with mental focus. It's the only place that I've found in this world that you can eliminate all, you know, all the senses, basically. To be able to try to master your thoughts, you rarely ever find you know, an opportunity to do that. The neat part about floating is there's actually nothing for you to do. We met neuropsychologist Justin Feinstein at the Laureate Institute for Brain Research. And here we get to see how well she's able to maintain stillness. He studies the impact of flotation therapy on patients with anxiety disorders and PTSD. Welcome to our open float room. We created a room around the pool that was built to be soundproof, lightproof, temperature controlled. In fact, we're trying to match the temperature of the water to the temperature of your skin, okay. which is a few degrees cooler than core, so about 95 degrees. He is one of the few scientists researching floating, which is how I ended up here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're gonna turn you into a bionic man. Just do this. May I? You may. Wearing a wireless waterproof EEG on my forehead, a heart rate so monitor, and a blood pressure cuff. In other words, the worst superhero Halloween costume. If I am in the busy world of constant interruptions, shredded attention, how can a good float help me with that? Think about what a strange world our brains find themselves in, suddenly inundated with 24-7 connectivity. So here, in many ways, you have the ultimate form of disconnection. While I marinated, Feinstein monitored my vitals next door. My heart rate dropped by 20 beats a minute, and my blood pressure dropped more than 20 points. I was not asleep, but powered down to just a flicker. By the end of the float, you were getting to about two to three breaths a minute, which was incredibly low. So low that there is a biological effect on the brain essentially telling it to quiet down. If you look at the first um, 21, 23 minutes uh, on the float, you see more activity, which is not uncommon. You're trying to relax. Neurophysiologist Ricardo Gil de Costa developed the technology that measured my brain activity. This is the point when you turn off your lights. This is your brain relaxing. After 65 minutes of floating in silent darkness, I was relaxed but also energized, and I had totally lost track of time. I could go for that. Every day, I don't think my office can fit that, but that would be great. An hour in the tank, however, is not for everyone. Some people might find that very restful. Some people might find that it freaks them out. Dr. Philip Muskin is a psychiatrist at New York Presbyterian Columbia University. Well, I don't think it's for everyone. The problem in a busy day, you're taking an hour off to go to a flotation tank where there are other things you could do that might really benefit you. Can the process of taking these breaks, emptying your mind, help me control my attention? 
Yes. Attention is a biological phenomenon. When you empty your mind, be that by breath, flotation, meditation, exercise, it works by allowing our brains to do some discharge of the junk and let us go back to work. I don't know if this is going to be the solution ultimately to all of the problems that technology may end up causing our nervous system. But it seems like a very simple way to at least give a respite. Feinstein is in the middle of his research. It's still experimental. The big discovery would be if those who use a float tank become so familiar with its quietude that they can access it even when they're not in the tank. I thought it was very cool. It, it seems like the ultimate in meditation. I didn't like the part where the top, though, comes down on you. I think that would creep me out a little bit. It's so dark. The second time I did it, I just kept my eyes open. And you don't, you can't see anything. My, and I'm thinking next time we're your speedo, that will really enhance the experience. Yeah, because for you. we're, because I think less clothes in there the actually, better. I really the, do. When I did the second time, you, the, you're not wearing anything at all. Yeah, I, I, I could get that. You can find out more about the experience. Picture that, including, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, I'm not going to be able to get this picture out of my mind. Including what yeah. it's like to keep your eyes open for an hour <laughs> in total darkness by visiting CBSThisMorning.com. I liked it a lot.